The United States Border Patrol has exciting and rewarding career opportunities with the nation's largest law enforcement organization. Border Patrol agents enjoy great pay, outstanding federal benefits, and up to $20,000 in recruitment incentives for newly appointed agents. If you are looking for a way to serve something greater than yourself, consider the United States Border Patrol. Learn more online at cbp.gov slash careers slash USBP. That's cbp.gov slash careers slash USBP. Before we begin, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the folks at Amazon Music for partnering with us on this episode of the Inside Line F1 podcast. But more on this later. Right then, let's get right into today's episode. So then, folks, it finally is here. The Las Vegas Grand Prix. The first ever Las Vegas Grand Prix. Right, Kunal? First ever, really. First ever in four decades, maybe. Four, that's the that's the math we're getting oh, at. No, 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 no. We don't count the last one because what happened in Vegas stayed in Vegas. And I think people were too drunk and full of substances that make you not remember things the day after that. I get a feeling this time, Kunal, on Monday morning, wait, force of habit, on Sunday morning, I don't think 90% of the people attending the Las Vegas Grand Prix will remember who even was the winner. That's the best part. <laughs> you know what, Samil? Here is extremely, here's an extremely ex- exciting fact. The Las Vegas Grand Prix has a five-day paddock pass. And I was wondering, what do they have for five days? Okay. Yeah. And there's a reason why I'm telling you this. On Sunday, there is something they call as a recovery brunch at the circuit from 11 a.m. Recovery? A recovery brunch. Recovery from? It's not for the drivers. It's not for the drivers, you know, driving in the cold, (laughs) driving in Las Vegas. It's a recovery brunch for the spectators who are there. And here's the exciting part. This is what the document says. You will be served a chef-approved hangover cures. I don't know why I said, oh, but you'll be served (laughs) chef-approved hangover cures in this recovery brunch, which is on the Sunday. But can you imagine a five-day ticket? And that's why Sunday morning, they might go to the recovery brunch and be like, ah, that was the driver who won. And if it's you, you'll be like, why did Carlos Sainz not win? Yeah, I mean, clearly, that's the most important part, right? Adam Driver might be a part of the Ferrari garage this weekend. Rihanna might be coming a couple of other big sports stars might be coming. You might just see Donald Trump appear as well. Some other random people might be on the grid. But for me, the most important person still is Carlos Sainz. Or the person who's actually going to end up paying $1,500 for a seat that doesn't even show you the track action. It's actually happening. The Indy 500ization of Formula 1 Kunal is finally here. Because you know what? I've met so many people who have gone to the Indy 500 for the last 20, 25 odd years, you ask them the name of one winner, they don't remember. The reason why? The Indy 500 has the snake pit. And the snake pit is where you go party all night. And that's where you get drunk. That's where you get stoned. That's when you get high and go out and have a good fun time. And on the Monday morning, leave back home for work. So there might be just that one person paying $1,500 just for track access to see a grand total of nothing. That seed exists. (laughs) <laughs> that and seat exists. Yes. For that money, you could actually buy the latest Apple MacBook Pro with, uh, what, the M2 processing chip with like a 15-inch screen? That's like the peak of computers that you could ever get in modern day and age for $1,500. But no, you choose that seat. Fair choice, I'd say. Well, you know, here, here, here's, here's the thing about Las Vegas. Everyone's been like, oh my God, there's extra hype. The race is going to be shit. But the truth is, the minute you get live images coming from Las Vegas. Pretty much every fan around will be like, yeah, you know, secretly I wish I was there in Las Vegas. <laughs> Even if I wasn't buying somebody a ticket, I actually took part in a competition where I could have won the ticket, but I didn't really win the ticket. So let me talk down the race and the efforts. That- <laughs> That's me. That's me. Sorry, you've caught me out. I I, I want to be there. Yes, I do. <laughs> Who And why not? It's a race weekend. It's, 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 one of, I can tell you, this is going to be one of the most exciting races for the history of Formula One as a sport, as a business. It 
could change the course of what's to come in the future as to how Formula One is run as a business. And we will get to that in, in a short moment. But you said Adam Driver in the Ferrari garage, Samuel. I, I mean, there will be people who will be wondering there in the paddock. And guys, this is just opening banter. Saying, why is he not driving the car if he's got driver in his name? Don't you think well so? Well done. A driver will be his initials. Very nice. <laughs> so who's in the car? A driver is in the car. What do you mean a driver? Oh, it is the a driver. Adam Driver it is. No, it's insane. I mean, the, so let's just scale it back down, right? Let's tell you how badly Formula One wants this. And which is why I think we're just going to label this the most important Grand Prix in the history of Grand Prix racing. Not Silverstone 1950, because eventually Grand Prix racing would, I mean, if not at Silverstone, maybe if not 1950, I don't know, by 1952, it would have become Formula One. This genuinely is going to be the most important race ever, because quite simply put, Kunal, if if we have reached out to the millionaires and billionaires of Miami, Las Vegas is apparently the wild, wild west of not just the US, but of the entire world. This is where people really take attention. Imagine tomorrow, if you're not Max Verstappen, for instance, if you're Oscar Piastri, right? You're someone who's developing their personal brand, relatively known, slightly unknown over here as well. But you end up taking a win in Las Vegas where people will genuinely be betting money on you. In a night, can you imagine how much a social media following would double? I mean, it would almost go double, seriously, for sure. How much people would remember him? His sponsor appeal. Suddenly, he becomes like the thing in all of Las Vegas. And people who aren't even watching the race remember only one name. Oh, Oscar from Australia. That, for a driver, that level of branding, imagine the branding for teams and brands and other sponsors. I mean, there's hands down no question on the hype and what it's eventually going to deliver to Formula One and the whole ecosystem. That's what you're trying to get at, Sommel. What is, what is also important is for the first time in the history of Formula One, and coincidentally, I think it's coincidence at least, this weekend is going to be the 1100th Grand Prix in Formula One history. We've literally had 1100 races, right? Yep. As far as I can remember, this is literally the first time Formula One, that is Liberty Media or FOM or Formula One Management as they are known, will turn race promoters, right? Oh, what do yeah. I mean by what do I mean by that? Let's assume it's let's assume it's a Grand Prix of India, just hypothetically since that's the first name that came to my mind. Grand Prix of India is a term that is actually owned by FOM. When, uh, when, when, let's assume I was promoting the Grand Prix of India, I would go to FOM and say, could I borrow the term Grand Prix of India for you, from you so I can host a race on ground? And the money, the race hosting money that I pay for to Formula One would be to borrow the official term, the Grand Prix of India in the FIA Formula One world championship right and that's why this time it's not another local promoter but formula one themselves who are the promoters and why are they doing this this is a new attempt in their business model because you know usually you they would just earn from race hosting fees which would be 10 15 20 million dollars but here there's at least 10x the number at play this weekend sawmill only their first race this weekend they've made a lot of capital expenditure but there is at least a 10x and a usual race weekend money that's possibly available for them. It's Las Vegas, baby. You go big or go home. And the best part is, do you know how much they've invested into their paddock building canal? Take a random guess. So I'll, I'll tell you the features of the paddock building first, just to make it sound even more stupid. Obviously, it has 10 team buildings, one for the FIA as well, one for the Drivers Association, one for all the race stewards, one for all the sponsors, all the promoters as well, I'm assuming. Let's just say there are 15 team buildings. There's also a church where you can actually get married in the paddock. I don't even know what value that adds, but yes, you can get married. So if you are a couple of mechanics racing in the same team or different ones, and I've always wanted to get married to each other while working in Formula One, this is the place to be, my friend. But there's a church. There's a pit building. I'm assuming somewhere there'll be a swimming pool as well because it's America. Uh, There's also a terrace with like a 20-foot Formula 1 logo, which has a video screen in the middle of it that just literally screams, screw you, I'm Formula 1, right atop the paddock. It also 
is nearby the Las Vegas Fair, which costs like roughly a couple of billion dollars to build, is like a giant ball of a screen that drivers will actually be able to see from the track in the middle of the race. So if you're thinking, well, Fernando Alonso watching Lance Stroll race, maybe the, in- the entire grid will be able to watch the entire race as it goes on the sphere. So all of this and more, can you imagine how much money has Formula 1 put down, like actually put down from their pockets to build this paddock building canal? Take a guess. I think it, if I remember correctly, it's $250 million just to build the building. Just to build the building. Yeah, the, to get the real estate to own it was another couple of hundred uh, million dollars. Right? Not much, just petty change. Another yeah. $250 million. So only. that's half a billion dollars already in Las Vegas, right? Do you know how much Andretti wants to invest to come into Formula One? <laughs> 300 million. Formula One has just smoked out $500 million for a pit building at one race, which may just end up being its best or worst ever. What a gamble, huh? Like, that is... And, and, and you know, guys, y'all probably understand that this is the preview of the Las Vegas Grand Prix, where we are talking everything but Formula One 10 minutes in. But the truth is, Las Vegas Grand Prix is so much more than just Formula One. Right. If you see the official schedules and we'll get to that as well, there is just so much more happening than just Formula One. And that's why Samuel and I decided we have to talk about so much more than just Formula One. And is this too much hype? Can they do differently? Well, the truth is, this has never been done before. So why not? Maybe this was the race that Formula One was always wanting to have, should have had. I mean, which other sport or which other race or, or a game or a match in a sport has had so much investment, so much hype, so much attention, yeah. so much uh, anticipation, Samuel? I can't really put my mind to it apart from the Olympics or, you know, a Cricket World Cup if you're in, in Asia or, say, the NFL or the like. So, you know, Formula One, they wanted 21 Super Bowls. And this is FOM, Liberty Media, saying... Guess what? If we were to turn race promoter, this is how we would promote a race. So we have turned race promoter and this is how we are promoting a race. And I'll put this into context for you folks. Today, what are the most famous buildings that Formula 1 cars actually go around in a race? You can name the Casino Square in Monaco. Fair enough. Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. I don't think it really counts. If you ask anyone outside the US about Hard Rock Stadium, they won't even know about it. Today, Formula 1 races at the Abu Dhabi Marina, which is like a, like a tier C touristy destination in the world, if I might put it very, very subtly. Visit Abu Dhabi if you're sponsoring us. It's a grade A destination, but otherwise not many people really say, hey, I want to go to the Abu Dhabi Marina. They don't say that. Not until today. We, Kunal, were also racing, also not racing, we're also racing past the Sochi Olympic Park a few years ago. We were also racing past the Albert Park in Melbourne, which is also not like a world-famous thing. The Baku Flame Towers, a couple of other places. But for context, do you know what buildings we're going to be racing at this year? The Las Vegas Fair, $2 billion to construct. Everyone in the world, including Elon Musk, is talking about it. The Las Vegas Eiffel Tower, like a legit Eiffel Tower in the middle of the Strip. There's going to be the Mirage Hotel, the Caesars Palace, which is, by the way, a hotel that's formerly hosted a Formula One race and was literally the entire place that the entire Hangover movie was based on. So if in case you want to find Charles Leclerc on Sunday morning, probably check the terrace of Caesars Palace. He might be there. You're also (laughs) going to be racing at the Bellagio, the Cosmopolitan, the MGM, sorry, I just have to say, the MGM freaking Grand and the T-Mobile Arena and the Las Vegas Strip. All of it. Like, If you tell an average American, right, we're going to be racing in a random hill outside of Austin with a giant American flag, they're going to be like, okay. But if you tell them we're going to be racing by the Eiffel Tower and the Bellagio, now that is what brings the sport to the people. Insane. I mean, I just can't even imagine how many more kids will grow up dreaming of Formula One just because they saw a car at the strip. You mean how many many more rich kids in America will grow up dreaming of Formula One? Because imagine... Imagine. And, you know, I'm going to list out all the facilities Formula One has. And I probably think, again, they missed out something. They should have said, pay a couple of billion dollars, couple of million. Sorry, I probably just (laughs) added another. Pay a couple of million. You get to do two laps around the Las Vegas Grand Prix yourself, around the the Las Vegas Strip Circuit, as it's called. Wait, wait, wait. A couple of million is very light, Kunal. You know how much they're paying for hotel rooms on an average? Like, I'm hearing hotel rooms that go up to $60,000. A couple of million is easy then. 
maybe a yeah, couple of billion would okay. be the right amount yeah and then imagine in a few years we'll have a 12th and a 13th team coming in from america saying well that's it i've taken the formula 1 bug i need to own a team i can't drive but i'll own a team but you know these are the ambitions that formula 1 wants to spark amongst the americans and you know the, this is all conversation the americanization of formula 1 actually it's the americanization of the fans of formula 1 americanization yeah. of formula 1 has happened through a lot of technology which formula 1 has of course had from america as well over over the you know 1100 race history but now the fans are being americanized and i think that's absolutely fantastic because america has one of the most mature fan markets in the world for various sports and now formula 1 wants uh, you know a share of that by a share of that mature fan market right and you 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 know you mentioned all these cool building names and i was only thinking of that one movie which was the oceans 11 12 13 i don't know if they're going to shoot a 14 hey. this weekend but that's yeah. you know when you talk of these abellagios and all like yeah that's oceans 11 and and the stuff and you also mentioned there's a chapel right which is where you can actually race to the altar as as it's it says <laughs> you what there, yeah yeah you that's the that's the tagline that they have right there is also in the formula 1 paddock a red carpet for f1's grand prix again something that's never happened before i assume that team principals drivers etc when they enter they will come via the red carpet including all the kidding me including all the celebrities and there are more than a few celebrities and i'm going to read out some names that i i actually have you know i have a list of and there is a casino inside the paddock as well only only that before you jump it's a no money casino so you can go there and play for fun eh. but it's a no money casino also there's an there's a 4D show car of formula 1 we've all seen it in 3D but 4D i'm assuming that's the smell of formula 1 that you will get when you see this show car wait 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 so on the casino point because that sounds really stupid to me They are actually going to be betting on Formula One in the real Bellagio and the Caesar's Palace and all the others, right? They they surely have to be because Formula One has tied up with them to create the Grand Prix experience, and they are literally in part owners of this race because they have had to block off their property and lease it to Formula One so that they can construct this circuit and go on with all the drama that happens all the way through. So yes, they are going to be betting. But are they going to be betting on Formula One, Kunal? Is that a thing? Because I can't ever imagine any other race, even in Monaco for that matter, people sitting inside a casino betting on the winner. That realistically could happen this time. Could well be. I mean, um, actually, I'm not a big fan of betting myself. As you guys know, every time there's a prediction, I'm the one on the losing end. Even though it's so easy to just pick Max Verstappen winning every race uh, in 2023, but uh, you know. Why why don't I actually read out? So this is on a Monday that we're releasing the preview of the Las Vegas Grand Prix. What all is going to happen and from when? Uh I know that there is an opening ceremony. Sorry. It's happening. Sorry, yes, sorry, is, sorry, sorry, sorry. Did you say an opening ceremony? An opening ceremony for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. This is on Wednesday. Okay. And and just wait for it. This is this is extremely exciting. And before the Wednesday, by the way, There is a Netflix cup, the the swing to survive, which is Gasly, oh. Albon, Norris, and Carlos Sainz participating uh, in a, on a nine hole uh, golf course in Las Vegas with four uh, professional. Yeah, yeah, swing to survive, and that's going to be broadcast live on Netflix. That's another first time for Netflix, at least in my head. What? On Wednesday, le- let me read the whole whole thing out to you. It's so exciting when you look at this. It's such a different way of approaching the same thing, right? Uh, there's the opening ceremony that we call it on Thursday. You got free practice one and two. Again, they are happening very late at night, local time, eight thirty to nine thirty for FP one, beyond midnight. So FP two is actually twelve o'clock. on saturday night to 1 o'clock right so we wow. all talk of singapore and time zones there's pretty much the same talk here of las vegas grand prix and time zones we also talk of singapore heat and humidity it's going to be about cold and dryness in las vegas right no no but you mean like 12 o'clock saturday morning friday right? friday night friday night friday, 12 o'clock friday yeah. night to oh my god this but also 12 cool. o'clock saturday morning which is late night in las vegas is when qualifying is happening right but i mean i'll put it this way uh especially in europe which is where i stay in oslo 
if one was to see the Japanese Grand Prix, the Japanese Grand Prix happens at pretty much the same time zone or the same time of the day for me, which is the morning of the next day as, say, the Las Vegas Grand Prix. So I'm not really the one complaining about this midnight stuff. And here's the interesting thing. All other races in history, Samuel, and this I can verify without even checking, have a concert after the days on track sessions have ended. <laughs> yes, right? Here, the fan zone concerts are before the day's sessions actually start because the sessions themselves are happening so late at night. Isn't it one o'clock in the morning local time on a Saturday night, Sunday morning? Right? That's correct. One o'clock local time. Imagine. I mean, uh, I think the time zones are slightly further forward in the east, if I'm not mistaken. So if you are a kid or anyone watching in New York, and if you have to watch a home race at three o'clock in the night, how do you explain your family? What do you do in this case? But Formula One just has had to go and do this. But let's for a second, before we go to the on-track stuff, look at the criticisms of the Las Vegas GP, right? We're not trying to make this like a balanced essay that you read on a Bleacher Report or something like that. Let's just tackle stuff straight on. The residents are saying it's a 1 a.m. Saturday night start or like a Sunday morning start. Crime your river. What are you going to do about it? I mean, what other time genuinely are you going to start the race on? Because the Europeans are going to be asleep at any time before 1 a.m., Anytime after 1 a.m., the Americans are going to be asleep. What's even the point? Started at 1 a.m. and figured it out. Uh, a near $500 million pit building. Yes, it's also Formula One's new headquarters. So one up to Formula One. A chapel to get married in the paddock. I think that's just a flex. That's not a criticism. That's just something you need to have in every paddock, in my opinion. So that's one. Uh, a giant F1 logo on the terrace. Good. What's there to criticize about that again? The other things. Curbs colored with card symbols, like a, a club or a spade or a heart. Not bad, I think we should do with every single race, in my opinion. I think, imagine coming to India and having traditional Indian, like, sort of scriptures or hand figurine kind of things. And by the way, fun quirk, the moment you arrive at Delhi airport in India, you suddenly see lots of hands giving you lots of, like, negative, uh, like, sort of hand gestures kind of things, which can be misinterpreted as abuses. It's just them doing yoga stuff. So imagine that on curbs. Like, weird stuff, weird symbols. Or maybe, I don't know, if you go to the Netherlands... Uh, you have some Dutch mascot or some sort of symbol on the curbs along with the orange, white and blue curbs. Like, that'll be cool, no? So yeah, exactly. That. I mean, the curbs, I, I can tell you, the curbs at Las Vegas are brilliant interpretation. You know, the, the, what, 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 what is Liberty Media trying to do? They're trying to integrate Formula One into what is classic Las Vegas, right? Yeah. I would love to be the sponsorship and marketing and brand manager for the Las Vegas Grand Prix because... The best way to integrate it is by pulling all these cultural, local, uh, you know, symbols and and then playing around with them. Much like, you know, the curbs in Brazil were flags of the Brazilian colors, right? And, yeah. and here they said, yeah, there we go. Las Vegas, we're going to put the, the four symbols that you normally see on card decks, which are, again, universal around the world, right? Some other criticisms that we've seen, which I don't really care is, you know, third race in USA, yeah, I rubbish. think it's rare for a country to have three races. The last time this happened was 2020, COVID-19, through three races in Italy. I don't really care as long as the races are fun and, you know, there are spectators out there having a great time. And on that, have you seen how small Europe is? I mean, technically, if we can have two Italian races, one San Marino race, and then go ahead and proceed to have, I don't know, a couple in Spain and Portugal. Rubbish. US is literally, I mean... Literally, it encapsulates so many countries that, I mean, if, if you had to put it on the map of Europe, right, if you have to geographically look at it, the USA is bigger than literally so many European countries combined. And if we look at those European countries, each of them has a Formula One Grand Prix. So the criticism that the USA has three races just sounds like a whole heap of rubbish to me. I mean, there's one race on the West Coast, one race in Texas, one race in the East. I think we're missing a couple of more races, genuinely, if you have to look at it from a country and a geographical distance point of view, because the center of, your, of, of the US is literally untapped. So, honestly, bullshit to that. I think US needs more races, if anything. Yeah, I mean, the world needs more races. And then all Sommel and I will do is live in our studio recording all the time. But, or traveling. <clears throat> or travel. Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, there's going to be, you know, ice sculpting of Formula One cars happening I am looking forward to the opening ceremony because I've seen the talent lineup that's playing and it's incredible. 
the will i am is going to be doing driver introductions for again? the opening ceremony yes again i think no. he did a fairly good job the last time and sorry uh, nobody nobody made some noise i mean he said america makes some noise and they said eh. well <laughs> maybe he's getting a second chance to do it maybe it's the the red bull junior academy kind of approach saying we'll give him a second chance okay uh, <laughs> but uh, there, there is also uh, you know it's it's uh, i think there is going to be a pre grid DJ set so just 8 minutes before the race there will be uh you know a DJ coming and playing hyping up the crowd they're going to call Las Vegas the home of formula 1 in North America that's the oh. that's the word that they're going to use there will be driver introductions again on the start grid on the sunday so in case you forgot your drivers from the wednesday opening ceremony you get a refresher <laughs> on the the sun or other saturday it's not even sunday right and uh, what else is there we will hear about track temperatures being extremely low and if the tires are going to perform so that's going to be a very technical conversation that will happen time and time again we will hear the stat that the last time we had a really cold race so the coldest race before 2023 las vegas was 1978 canadian grand prix where it was only 5 degrees centigrade right oh. and then another stat somel which will come up is the last time a race wasn't on a sunday was 1985 South African Grand Prix. We will keep hearing all these stats, right? And here's here's a fun fact though, and I think this is this is typical. The you know, we know that the average length of a Formula 1 Grand Prix is 300 kilometers, right? So the minute you finish 300 kilometers, you go one extra lap and you end the race. So whether it's 71 or 73 or 37 or whatever it comes up at. The Las Vegas Grand Prix is the longest race by distance at 309.9 kilometers race distance wow. right and if the race track is 6. Point something kilometers long you can ask that they could have just ended it on 49 laps but i get a feeling that they want us to remember it's 50 laps just in the yeah. 500 you know las vegas 50 they don't want people to remember 49 so they've gone with the longest race distance this weekend and on that front as well it's been 26 minutes into this episode and we're only now touching up upon the fact that this circuit has a 2 km long straight a 2 km long straight they're going to be literally revving the life out of those engines i mean i I don't even know what the action on the track is going to be like. A 2 km straight. By the way, Alex Albon, if you're watching or listening, you're going to be smiling all the way to the bank because clearly that's P3 guaranteed for him in qualifying. But a 2 km straight, literally two uh, two places in the entire circuit where you can pass and potentially if the F1 game is correct and that game has been uh modeled on the basis of the blueprints that are given to the gamers by the circuit makers so i get a feeling they are correct but if they are correct the starting grid for p20 is literally on a curve so if you're p20 you're literally starting like turning left not straight so that is even more insane uh track temperatures are going to be super low so i don't even know how they're going to warm up their tires when it's literally 9 degree centigrade ambient temperatures which means mercedes are going to make a big hue and cry about stuff because traditionally they've had tire heating problems no i don't know with if it's there with this car because we haven't seen it exposed as much but in the older gen they were really really noisy about warming up their tires in cold conditions so there's that and uh, the one last criticism that i want to talk about with the las vegas circuit canal apart from the track because honestly i don't even no and i don't even care of what happens on the track because when you go back in time do you remember the miami gp's race winner or do you remember that dj khaled was on the grid talking about changing tires with the wheel cover on and no pit gun so that is what you remember right you don't remember that verstappen won and dominated and so on and so forth or you don't even remember that it actually went past underneath the flyover what you do remember is the fake marina so these are the things that you will remember at the end but the circuit right people are coming up on twitter las vegas residents and saying oh they've cut up our trees oh they've filled up our lakes oh they've built up a giant grandstand over here oh i can't see this from my hotel room oh i can't see this from my apartment or the bridge that i used to cross over is now shut and it's got a black poster on it so that i can't see the race that's normal it's not just las vegas it happens everywhere and we had uh, ben wilshire from uh, driven international coming on to our podcast talking about this and yes 
even at a circuit like the Hyderabad International Circuit, just made for the Indian Racing League in Formula E, over there as well, these things happen. So, all the all the drama and all the negative promotions that the Las Vegas GP organizers are getting, I think it's rubbish, isn't it? We, we, we see this for every race, just that it comes out more because it's Las Vegas. What do you reckon? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, people need to catch a break. Maybe they're just tired. There's so many races to follow each time back, time and time again. Maybe they will be entertained once the festivities start. It's Diwali week in India and it's Formula One week in Las Vegas. I'm pretty sure, actually, the opening ceremony is going to have a drone show which says, welcome to Las Vegas. It'll transition into an F1 car. When those things happen and the emotions kick in, everybody's going, that's it, it's Las Vegas. Let's go and have fun. And uh, it's also, since I'm throwing stats, the 12th different venue in the USA. And Somil, here's something I've been waiting to dying to say on this episode, right? Which is that... 40 years ago, 81 and 82, so well, 41 or whatever you count it, Formula One raced in a car parking lot in the Caesars Palace Hotel, like you said. It's taken 40 plus years for Formula One to exit the car park and actually come and now race on the roads of Las Vegas. I think that's pretty iconic. (laughs) Absolutely. And uh, folks, if you're just wondering, right, 30 minutes to the episode, we haven't spoken about what's going to happen on track. There's a reason. Tomorrow, when Formula 1 actually gets to the Las Vegas trip, it'll change the game for the entire series forever. Because now, I I mean, I'm just imagining, Kunal, if tomorrow Colton Hurt and Patricio Award want to get a Formula 1 backer, right, suddenly their appeal will be so much bigger when they say, hey, Next year, Las Vegas GP, I'm going to be wearing your logo in a car that's sponsored by your company there. Now do you want to fund me? That changes the game. Because to to millions of rich American investors, right, Formula One is something that happens in a faraway land watched by geeks and nerds that they can't even see, feel or touch and has no tangible value on their business. If you are a Red Bull racing driver, or for instance, if you're Andretti, if Andretti needs more money, tomorrow if it goes to, I don't know, uh, some random startup from Silicon Valley that's there in Las Vegas to celebrate, and that billionaire meets Michael Andretti and says, hey, I'm willing to pump $200 million into your team if you give me title sponsorship. These are the kind of deals that can happen. Drivers like Colton Herter or Patricio Ward can go to billionaires they meet over there and be like, I can carry your name and your logo here next year. There can be teams that can come up, Grand Prix that can spring up. Because in the past, Kunal, I've heard stories of Lots of mayors of cities meeting Formula One organizers at other street circuits and proposing plans for circuits at other places. So this could be the betting hub for so many different things. This is, I think, Formula One's biggest and best ever race weekend, if there ever was one. Hands down. I mean, people will be wondering if we're being paid by Formula One to say all this. The truth is no. No, rubbish. Yeah. But this is going to change the course of future races, as I said at the start of the episode. Formula One will take this model and say, you know what? This is what we can deliver. This is what you need to deliver if you want us to race in your city. And there's another offshoot, and maybe this is where I'm shooting a little too far, is let's assume Formula One wants to race in a market and they can't find a local promoter. Could they just end up being a local promoter again in the future? So it just doesn't limit them to you know, uh, to sort of the United States of America, but if they could go elsewhere, Sommel, that's where I'm thinking. On the championship front, I think Checo Perez is in the battle for P2. I know he's in battle for P2. I think if Hamilton scores by at least six points, he outscores him by at least six points, then the battle for P2 will go down to the wire in Abu Dhabi, which will please nobody but the Sheikhs, I guess, and, <laughs> and the Lewis Hamilton fans out there. But Uh, The colder temperatures will be a constant question. 20 points between Ferrari and Mercedes for P2. That will be epic. Cooler tracks have usually benefited Ferrari, like Sommel pointed out. Uh, It will be very difficult to put heat into the tires. So very interesting. It's going to be Monza levels of speed that they could achieve. But teams are just forced to use larger wings and different toe angles to keep tire temperatures going in as well. And Sommel, if there's anything that one needs to remember going into the race weekend is the formula for converting Fahrenheit temperature readings to Celsius. Oh, God. Yes. And uh, it's not 
a how many ever mile circuit it's a 6 kilometer circuit what the hell is a kilometer search it up uh, and say and add the logan sarge name as well it's just an american meme i'm referring to because they don't know what apparently they don't know what a kilometer is so we have crazy memes and vines of logan sarge going around saying what the hell is a kilometer but okay final point right uh, on on that thing of racing i know it's not going to be the focus this weekend and it shouldn't be as well but uh, for the las vegas gp who are the people going to be putting their money on obviously it's going to be max i really say formula 1 if you genuinely care about your product and all your fans please split it into two have two podium ceremonies have two main races have formula 1 and formula 1.5 because if they see verstappen dominating by 60 seconds they're probably not going to come back next year so let's give them a show I'd say Carlos Sainz for the win because I always say Carlos Sainz for the win and he's good on a Saturday usually. So that's my reasoning. But if you're sitting at the Bellagio Canal and you have a fat stack of five really pretty looking chips and the lady in the table says, "Monsieur Shah, who are you putting your money on? Who are you putting your money on?" I'm going to put my money on Max Verstappen even though oh, I'll probably get a negative return. but no on a more, on a more serious <laughs> note i i i would go oh, with the i would go with the ferraris because mm. colder temps long straights monza esque setups needed etc and we saw how strong the ferraris were at that time in in monza could it be your boy carlos sainz or could it be the everybody's boy charles leclerc uh you know at, out at the front and i just hope that formula 1 is able to be a little dynamic here i know they won't but i think somehow this is a race that can run without the drs with such long straights could we experiment running without the drs because yeah. the drs will actually just make it so easy down those straights instead of slip streaming and having a battle you will suddenly be like i flick a switch and i drive by so fast that by the end of the straight i'm like five car lengths ahead of you in the braking spot could it be you know, that yeah that that could well happen in all honesty and which is where i think we should really keep an outside bet on williams as well because they're going to be let's just say interesting to watch ah the last point sorry i know we're going overboard but you know third american race home race for logan sargent 36 and a half minutes into the episode where two formula 1 paddock inside not i don't say paddock inside as where people who have worked in formula 1 and around motorsport are discussing the sport and still we haven't brought up the fact that it's a home race for Haas and Logan Sargent so if you're thinking what we need is a 12th or an 11th american team that's your answer it's not the americanization that sells it's the story around it that sells so we don't really need and ready anymore i i know it's an uncalled pot shot but here we are yeah and you know the the circuit layout to me is extremely interesting again lots of criticism for it but guys we've not seen a single lap being driven around this yeah. circuit and we are criticizing it looks like an inverted pig hanging as far as i see the vegan in me finds that pretty interesting but <laughs> i love the names of the corners there's a corner name called elevated monorail and somel takes the inside line on kunal at the elevated monorail corner <laughs> There's also there's also Harbor Island Apartments. There's Top Golf. There is Planet Hollywood. That's going to be where Lewis Hamilton will want to make a few moves as well, I guess, right? But seriously, it will eventually be corner numbers that will be used. Even the corner names is what will get hyped in the build up to the race. It's a lot of weird monopoly names, isn't it? Like Hollywood Avenue and Upper Monorail Section or Fleet Street. Fleet Street is actually a place though. But folks, I think we're going overboard now. You can clearly tell. So, thank you so much for listening to our Las Vegas GP preview where we spoke about everything apart from the action on track because that's what the weekend is going to be like. But what really excites you most about this weekend? Let us know while looking down on your social media handles and tagging us at, at @insideline_f1 pod. So, folks, we'll be back on Sunday. We'll be back. We'll actually be back on Sunday for our recovery episode. It's not the review episode. It'll be the recovery episode on Sunday that you should be tuning into. So thank you so much for listening, folks. We'll be back soon. My name is Somal Arora, joined by Kunal Shah. This was the Inside Line F1 podcast, and all I'm going to say is try to remember some things from this weekend. Have fun. Bye bye.
Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Inside Line F1 podcast. Before we ended, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Amazon Music once again for partnering with us on this episode of the podcast.